meeting with him, so then I decided I will never ever retire in traveling in my life. I have no retirement in my life. This is, this is the big motivation I got from him. So I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Shaka Trizvi. And uh, he's uh, worked in uh, overseas and back home in Pakistan on a very senior position. He was advisor with the government. And uh, after the retirement, uh, when he came in, he started uh, so much uh, work for the seniors, for the welfare of the seniors. He was a member of, uh, he's, a, he's a currently board member of the Lions Club and YMCA. And uh, after the retirement, he dedicated for the seniors uplifting the quality of their life and making the positive impact. Vice Chairman of Frontier Your Society of Senior Citizens Organization, currently responsible for leading the Seniors Forum in Canada. So I would like to invite uh, Brother Shakir Tizvi to. Whenever I invite anybody in my session, they are always interesting to me. They included me in seniors. Seniors to me and the short person. And I believe you all are the short person. But now we have changed the technology. In many places we don't call them seniors, we call them old adults. I think we're going to show that. In fact, all the old adults. You all are at least old enough to be older and you are elder. Also, Asnath, thanks for doing the nice work. Uh, first, I'm really thankful that you are here in the room. And special thanks to the team, Imam Shah, Kiyasar, and Harita for organizing this team. Thank you very much. I would like to welcome you on behalf of Dikna Senior Center. Uh, just to give you a very short what the Senior Forum is. Senior Forum is basically here to improve the quality of life of seniors and make them to have an active aging. This is very, very important to be in active aging because Alhamdulillah, the life span is no more 65 or 70 years. We're talking about 80 to 5 years. We have more than 2,000 people who are engaged in more than 100 years. Uh, so we have to look after ourselves. Uh, that's why. So what basically we do, just two things. In order to keep them active, we have a fitness program. We run five times a week, now on Zoom. And almost now, there has been 35 to 40 participants attending every day. Five days a week, we have five different instructors and two attending it. That's one activity. <coughs> Second activity is this sort of uh, seminar or workshop or gathering, which I believe at least once or twice. Our objective is not only empowering you with knowledge, but also to provide you an opportunity to meet yourself. And this is the first in-person learning session after the COVID. For that, I'm thankful to the other and the people to do it. Now, today's topic is elder abuse. What, what is elder abuse? According to the World Health Organization, a single or repeated act a lack of appropriate actions occurring within, very important, occurring within any relationship where there is an expectation of trust. This causes harm or distress to the older person. So the person whom you are trusting, your family member, your doctor, your caregiver, your friend whom you don't expect, if you have these activity, that is called elder abuse. And mind you, you don't have to be very old enough or invalid to be subjected to elder abuse. You could be young enough, it's just to kill the elder abuse. So it is not only for senior, it is for everybody. This this elder abuse is very serious and it's a growing injustice in our community. It's a growing group. Over 200,000, about 8 to 10 percent older adults in Ontario, they experience or have a risk of elder abuse. These are the main figures. And very interestingly, what I would say is very important, 32 percent of these seniors police reported violence were recognized by family members. This is reality. Though our culture, as the law says, religion says something very really different. But the society in which we are living, imagine 33% people who have reported abuse 
He was the victim of his own family members. Your son, your daughter, your in-laws, that's the living. So, human rights say that health abuse and neglect to be identified as a human right abuse. A very, very important thing. Unfortunately, under the Canadian Criminal Code, there is no specific act that criminalizes health abuse. But it does not mean it's legal. It is illegal to harm older people in Canada. It is illegal. But the way it is treated is treated under the general criminal laws within the Constitution, within the Criminal Code, like Legal Case Disease. There is a Criminal Code for that, mass order, home invasion, sexual assault, and fraud. So those cases are treated under those uh, clauses. So, but there is now a growing awareness of this uh, and the abuse uh, happening in the country. Now, this part I won't take much because we have a subject specialist who will be talking more about these things, but very briefly I'm touching it. What are the forms of elder abuse? Financial abuse. So misusing your fund and as if without the full knowledge of consent for sense. In 2021, there were 92,000 people who were abused from the court and the court and the loss of 1.7 billion in Canada. That is the you get, you get the call from CRA or revenue or bank thing like that, or a call for your grandson to speak in. So these are one. Psychological abuse. That's, that's very, very common in our age group because of the age problem. We, 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 we lose losing our identity. We look at, we don't better in this. We lose our dignity, I mean. That is part of the abuse. Also physical abuse. We have to talk about it. Sexual abuse, neglect. This is the abuse. If you are intentionally somebody is neglecting you because of an aid, that is an abuse and is a crime. And also system abuse. There are some systems where they discriminate between the senior, between the older, and the people. So these are what I'm pretty sure my next speaker is going to be talking again on this. What is the sign of elder abuse? And again, if you handle by perfect speaker, you see a change in mood, patient, clear anxiety, in behavior. You withdraw yourself, you come quiet, you don't participate in the system, you don't come out. It is a sign. Physical harm, you cannot explain why the person was wrong, but injury. You neglect. You you're reluctant to talk about it within the family, with your children, with your friends. I mean, that is the sign of the abuse in you. you have of course, because the financial abuse, you are not able to meet your financial obligation. So, or you have a different living arrangement, family. There are a few things which will be definitely be discussed in detail by my next speaker. Luckily, there are a lot of resources available. How to report that abuse? There are many organizations, the Oslo Police, there are a number. Many of them are not aware of this, but they are available, and there are seeing the safety line, you are seeing the self line, victim support, you have uh, reporting and abuse, or you, 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 you need assistance from the authorities. So there is a list of uh, numbers are there. You can, you can find it, you can find this, my presentation on the seniors forum website. So my idea was to uh, let you know that there are many resources available of which most of us are not aware of it. And that is the dilemma. Uh, within, within our community, Muslim community, rural people, they are not that much knowledgeable. There are so much information and support available from the government, not only in this, on many things. So try to look around and see what's going on. We try to put it on the website. So basically, we have to stop the abuse. That is the objective. So now for that, I'm going to invite a speaker on a society call, and this is, I want to also talk about this thing, OSCO. OSCO is an Ontario Society for Senior Citizen Organization. Uh, this is a provincial organization. This is a charitable organization. It is from 1986, and there are about one, about 200 seniors organizations in Ontario. They are members 
of this organization. And through them, we teach almost three to 400,000 seniors. Now what they do, they do the training, learning, they are guiding the government, defining the policy, they are representing the seniors to the government, speak about the issues and all. It's a very, very important organization. And from there, I was lucky to get their executive director. I also happen to be the vice chairman of the OSCO. I feel really privileged to be part of the SFP organization from our community. So we have here with us a very dynamic, active lady. She is the executive director, but to me, she is more of a CEO of the organization running for the last 15 years, very vividly. And they have been talking, they have been talking about this elder abuse. And in the last, also in the last 12 years, <coughs> have conducted or trained or given a presentation more than 9,000 seniors from Sudbury to Niagara region, from Essex County to Oshawa. So it is an organization which is constantly working on the reviews, creating the awareness among the people, taking action, guiding the government how to control it. So it's my pleasure to invite our executive director, Elizabeth, again, please.